Hey guys, welcome to this training video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use, first of all, your Google Sheet functions. Second of all, how to create your custom function that you that is not part of the Google Sheets function. And also, how we can incorporate other JavaScript library and then use its functionality to create a custom custom functions. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's look at a basic function. So if you have your Google Sheet open, and by the way, in case those of you who may not know what Google Sheet is, which I don't know why, because this is like the famous thing out there that everybody uses, it, it's a lot better than your regular plain Jane uh, Microsoft Excel. And because first of all, it's on the cloud, you can access it anywhere. You don't have to email the one file to somebody else for them to make the update and then you they send it back to you and then you know that that particular old way of thinking is no longer in this day and age need to be happening. And that's why Google has created its Google Sheets, Google Doc, and all that Google Suite that I think you have if you have not looked into it, I think you should definitely look it up. Check this out and it will blow your mind with all the different things that it could do and which I am going to be creating a, a video series with a lot of different functionality that Google Sheet offers that most people do not know about. Like for example, one of them, how you can create a website just like your regular website with HTML, JavaScript and everything else and then use Google Sheets as a back end of it to store data like your MyPHP admin and MySQL database just like that. If you are interested in that, let me know in the comments below so that way I know how many people are really interested. If you guys are not really interested, I'm not even going to bother with it, but if you are interested in learning how to create a free website with JavaScript, Ajax, HTML, and all that good stuff. And on the back end side, store information in your Google Sheets, just like you would in MySQL. Comment below or send me an email. Go to my website, which is mark, actually, which is codewithmark.com. I will also put the link in the description. But anyway, I'm going to make cut this intro short now and let's get right to it. So one of the functions that Google Sheets has, which has a lot of them. <clears throat> so let's say if you just type in select A1 and then in the address bar right here, just hit down equal sign and then let's say equal and then date or something like that, or you start typing something in, like say day, or even date value, or date, and then if you type in other function like A, and there's gonna be all list of functions that will come up. So what I will do is I'll just pick, let's say date. Actually, no, I will pick a day function. So when I type that in there, there's gonna be another helpful menu that will come up in as, hey, if you wanna know the day of that date, you need to type this in. So what I will do is basically I'm going to copy this whole thing just to show you that it works. And let's go put this in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the date to be current date, obviously, because we don't need it to be, let's say, 2017. Today is the 11th. And today is also Wednesday so I'm hoping it will say Wednesday or something like that or this is just the day the day of the week or day of the month so that's one of the functions however if you want to create a custom function in addition to what Google offers what do you need to do is you go to this uh, menu where it says tools and then from there you want to click on script editor and this will bring up this sheet right here as soon as it comes up. And then from here, you can type in different stuff and looks like I already have something going on. So I'm just gonna to toss this because I was using it for another functionality. So now what I'm gonna do is in here where it says untitled project, I'm just gonna type this custom function. Custom function. All right, and then if I wanna create something in here and just so you know this particular part of the 
uh, screen is known as Google App Script, short for GAS. But Google people don't like it when you call it GAS because they get a little offended, but it's GAS. So in here, anything you type in here is plain JavaScript. Like not even jQuery, but regular JavaScript. If you are good with regular, plain, vanilla JavaScript, you could type that in here and then go to town. So for example, I'm gonna copy this one function in here. And it's very simple. Basically, what it's gonna do is, and then I'm gonna hit save, or you could just hit the floppy kit to hit save. And basically what it does is, whatever value that goes into this function, it's gonna time it by two and return its value. So let's use this particular function now. So I'm gonna to toss this thing, cause I don't need it. And then I'm gonna type in, let's say, I don't know, let's just try something simple. I'm gonna type in two, so I'm expecting after it's done to say four. But before I do that, I'm gonna take that out. So this is what it is. And then as you saw, it says loading, loading, and it changed the number to be four. So if I type in four times two, eight, 16, 32, you get the point. So that's how simple it is for you to create a regular uh, JavaScript uh, functions in here in a custom function format. So let's try something else. It's a little more complicated. So let's say if I have an email address and I want to parse out the user's name and the domain separately. So how do I do that is I just create two different functions that will allow me to do that. So I already have it here, but I'm gonna just copy and paste in here, save me some time. As you guys, if you have seen any of my previous videos, I rather save time on typing and help you understand how it works. So if you want to, you can obviously go to my website and download all this code. And also if you want the code for this one, which is pretty plain, but if you really need it, I will put the link in the description where you could just literally copy paste so you don't have to pause the video, copy it, so on and so forth. So let's go. So the first function, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna say wherever it is the add, add symbol, anything prior to that, it's gonna extract it out and show it. So let's do that. So let's get the name first. So I'm gonna leave this in here and then go up in here and say, so in here I'm gonna say, in the parenthesis, so in here, I'm gonna type in, I don't know, info at codewithmark.com. So what I'm expecting as a final result to be is to just give me the word info. And then let hold, build hold, there we go, there's the word. So basically that's what I wanted. And then if I go back in here, use the same function, I mean different function, but same email address. Now I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna type in my email info at codewithmark.com. And now what I'm expecting to see is it's gonna give me the domain which is codewithmark.com. And then voila, here we go. Now you might be wondering, that's great, and you probably are excited about it, but wait, there's one more thing you could do. Remember when I said in the beginning of the video where you can incorporate other JavaScript library, for example, Moment, Load.js, and any other stuff? You can easily incorporate that in here and then use it to create your own custom function. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not just delete this because I don't need it. So in order for you to include other libraries, what you need to do is, so let's say for example, if you go to momentjs.com and you want to include it because you want to know the, what the week ending day is. This is just an example guys, obviously, and you can include other library for whatever project that you're working on. And then, you know, each, and it depends on what kind of project, what your product's needs are. So that's what I'm, that's what you will need. But just to give you an example, if you follow this principle across the board, you will be able to include other JavaScript libraries in your projects as well. So let's say if I go to moment 
www.jazz.com and I want to include this library just like you would if you were writing your HTML uh, web page or your you know PHP uh, class or file whatever just like including it basically same thing so what do you do is you click on this so I'm gonna copy this whole thing and in order for you to include it what do you do is go to file new and then you're gonna pick the one that says script file and you probably are noticed in the HTML thing and that is something that you can create your own web pages in here and like I said before and then use Google Sheet as a data storage just like your MySQL and you can send email and do triggers and all kinds of stuff like for example if you want like if you have your website right and you have a cron job that runs every I don't know 30 minutes every day or month or whatever and here with Google Sheets you could also set triggers as well which will not only trigger within the sheet, but also it can call other URLs as well. Now think about it for a second, how powerful and crazy that is. You can not only include triggers within the sheet, but also to the other processes, like for example, your other web server, or extract information from somewhere else, like Amazon or YouTube or whatever else. So the possibility is insane. So you could use your regular Google Sheet and set up triggers to run the process. So in case if your server doesn't run any cron job, you can use this as a cron job. Like that's insane, like crazy. So to show you how do you set up triggers is you go to I think resources and then all triggers. And then I say if I want to create a new one, and then I can say whatever the function it is, like for example, you write a function here, and then time driven is going to be time driven, and you could do it every minute, day, week, or month. If you do it, let's say every hour, right? So you could do every two hours, four hours, six six eight ten or if you wanted to do a day you could do a different time frame obviously week time you could do a monday certain things and certain thing on tuesday and so on and so forth but think about how powerful that is you have a complete control over this whole thing so back to adding moment js to your uh, custom function here so you go to f file new skip the file and then from there, I'm just going to name this moment just for the sake of simplicity. JS. And then here, I'm just going to delete everything. Go back in here, copy it. And literally, I'm just going to paste it. That's all I'm going to do. And then save it. And then I already have a function ready for you guys. So you, I don't have to type it. So basically, if you... What this is going on, this is this part of the line of the code is just a moment function. So it's going to import, include within the function parameter, a date, whatever the person enters in. Then it's going to say, hey, go to the end week ending date and give me the week ending date with month, date, and year. So let's see if this thing really works. So today is the 1st, uh, January, January 11, 2017. So... If I bring my, it's not going to show me here, but take my word for it. And today is Wednesday, January 11, 2017. So according to my calendar, the week ending will be January 14, 2014, 2017. So let's see if we can get that based on the date that we want to enter in. So I'm going to go here, say, let's just put it here just for the hell of it. And then here I'm going to put it as a, string so i'm gonna put down let's say one dash one dash 2017 so i'm expecting to see one dash 2000 one da slash 14 2017 that's the date the weekend the date that i'm expecting to see so let's see if it does oh no it didn't work so let's see what happened did i not save it oh that's why, because I have to save it first, so it includes it. And if I go back in here, and I click OK, and voila. There you go. And just to test the theory out, I could just change this to, let's say, 9 or something. It will still give me the weekending date of that. 
So there you go. And that's how you first create your own custom function, basic one and a little advanced. And then also this is how you incorporate external libraries in your Google Sheet to create custom functions. Hopefully this will help you in, in your Google Sheet functionality. And then if you like this video, please subscribe and comment, rate, and all that good stuff. And also, furthermore, do check out my website. I do have a lot of stuff there that you will find it helpful, which is codewithmark.com. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Take care.